Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a PS1 game, and that happens to be a Balaburn. And it was developed by Tamsoft and published by Takara and was released in 1998 and only in Japan. And it happens to be a 3D beat-em-up and fighting game. Now I really can't talk too much about the story since all of it is in Japanese only, and from what I've seen of the cutscenes in the game, it seems like that the story is always different with every character. But the one thing that all characters' story have in common is that they're all trying to collect different stones of the elements. So as for all the playable characters, there's Aqualia, who happens to be a robot who kinda looks like a black mage, Ariel, who is kinda like a priestess, Bane, who is a giant monkey, of course, Kalud, who is a humanoid cat, then there's Nate, who kinda looks like a half-human, half-terminator sort of thing going on, and then there's Pooley and Rose, but I really don't know what else to say about them. And finally I'll mention is Blood. Yeah, I'm not even making this up. His name is Blood, because he's edgy as fuck! And that sums up all the main characters that you can play as. Of course, there are other characters that appear in the story mode, but they are boss characters, or even sub-bosses. So now let's talk about the main attraction here, the story mode. So the story mode in here is kind of like a mixture of like, a beat-em-up, also a fighting game, but also sort of like an adventure platforming kind of game too. So in all the levels, you get many different enemies that you get to beat the crap out of, and you also do get to level up as well. So to throw in another thing to add to that mixture, it does have some minor RPG elements. And of course, all the monsters that you beat end up dropping uh, health power-ups. But as for the main objective itself, you just gotta try and go through point A to point B, but to get to point B is that you also need to collect some keys to get through doors. And sometimes to get there, you gotta do some 3D platforming. And as a bonus option, you can also collect different colored coins throughout the game. And whenever you get to a boss, whether it be a sub-boss or a regular boss, it actually goes to a side view where it actually plays like a 3D fighting game. And you just move on to the next stage and do the exact same stuff within the other settings, and there you go. So for a game made by Tamsoft, it is actually kind of unique since it actually takes both elements of many different games that they've done, but like puts them into one. And this is one of their earlier games too, so this is way before the Simple Series stuff on PS2. So now let's get moving on to the game's controls. And they're kind of difficult to explain, but I'll try my best here. So for the main part, you know, like the beat em up action platforming and minor RPG element thing. So you jump with the X button and you use a square, triangle, and circle for different attacks. So you got uh, medium punch, high kick, low kick, and also to do a low punch, you actually press uh, R1. And holding L1 allows you to block, and if you move around while holding L1, then you can walk slowly. Well, it may sound pretty straightforward though, but the part that's kind of difficult to talk about is the walking in this game. Now, to put it bluntly, the walking in this game is very dated. And the tricky thing is too, is that it's not 100% tank controls, but also like, isn't either. So when you just hold up forward, you go forward, you know, that's obvious stuff. But if you press either left or right as its own, you just do it like a sidestep. And pressing down on its own allows you to do a back dash or even a backflip. Now if you're holding left or right while you're pressing up, then yeah, you can actually steer normally, but it's kind of awkward though. I find the better way of steering in this game is actually using L2 and R2. Yeah, that's the part that feels really dated about this game, is that using R2 and L2 to steer as you're going forward. It's like almost like you're driving a person. But if you hold either R2 or L2 as its own without moving around, then you can actually turn around. And also the game actually focuses from the behind view, so you don't really have to worry too much about the camera. Because while it does suck that you don't really have much camera control, I do find that it actually does adjust itself pretty well. But as for the fighting parts when you're fighting bosses, or if you're playing in versus mode, the attacking and doing the super moves and all that kind of stuff is all the same, but moving around here pretty much does feel like your typical early 3D fighting game. So yeah, even though it is side-scrolling at these parts, you still have to press X in order to jump, which is kind of weird, but once you get over that though, I do find that the fighting game parts are actually not too bad. I'll say this, I do think this game does age a lot better than the first game that they did, Battle Arena Toshinden. 
But even as the 3D fighting game sections go, though, I wouldn't say it's anywhere near as good as, like, I don't know, like, Tekken 2 or 3. But at the very least, the fighting is somewhat responsive, and it isn't slow as shit. It's just more simplistic stuff, really, though, but given that this is more of a beat-em-up than a fighting game, it does kind of make sense. But the controls overall, well, I think for the time it came out, they're not bad, but of course looking at them by today's standards, then yeah, they are a little rough around the edges. So now, let's get moving on to the other things, like the graphics, and I do think that the graphics in this one do have a mix of some good things and not so good things. So as for the good things in here, I really do like the character designs in this game. I think a lot of them look pretty great. But probably my favorite looking characters in this game would have to be Aqualia, Ariel, and Nate. But even the other characters, I do find that their character designs are not too bad either. And even the character models themselves really don't look that bad looking for 1998 standards, even though uh, the character Blood does have that typical like Popeye arms just like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII has, but you know what though, it's excusable. And the game's level design is pretty good overall, and I do like some of the different settings that you go to. And I also do like the fact that in the cutscenes, you actually do get to see characters' lip movement as they're talking, which is something you didn't see too, too often within PS1 games. But as for the one thing that I think could have been a lot better though about the graphics is that there are some sceneries in the game that are missing textures and it looks like it's just painted a solid color and that's it and it just looks kind of ugly. Now if this was like a more like earlier PS1 game then I could understand it being like that but given that this is 1998 I just feel like it just could have been a lot better because you've had like many other games where like if you look at this dirt background they would actually put some texture to make it look like dirt and this tree is just like one solid color there's like no detail to it whatsoever. But other than that one thing though I do find that the rest of the graphics do look pretty good for what they are. So now as for the game's music, the music in this game is actually really nice and I do like it quite a bit. So not only do all the songs fit the setting pretty well, but some of them are actually kind of catchy too. But unfortunately, as much as I do like the OST in this game, I can't seem to find the OST anywhere. I can't find it on YouTube, I can't find it on other uh, video game OST sites, it just seems like I just can't find it anywhere, which kind of sucks, so that's why you're probably listening to whatever the hell I'm putting in here. But if you did manage to find the OST, or if you play this game and you listen to the music, I think it's actually quite good. I mean, it's not the most amazing, like, PS1 OST ever, but I do think it is a pretty good one. So now, if you wanted to go out and buy yourself a copy of this game, if you have a way to play it, then good news is, is that this game is actually still really cheap. The cheapest I've seen it for was about $11.99, and the highest I've seen it for was about $27.99. But usually the prices in between are pretty fair. So now, as for my overall thoughts on a Balaburn, is that, well, this might surprise you, but I actually kind of like the game. Now with that said, of course, that doesn't mean I love it and that I think it's amazing or that it's great because, well, this game definitely does have its issues, but for some reason though, I actually do think it is kind of decent. So of course, the big elephant in the room here has to be the controls and the fact that they're very dated. Now for me personally, it did take me some time to get used to them, especially trying to do the platforming sections, but I was able to get used to them in a way where it actually wasn't as bad as some other games that I've played. This might actually surprise some of you, but I actually find this game was a lot easier to get used to than let's say like the early Tomb Raider games. I mean those games took me like at least like more than an hour to get used to, where this at least took me like maybe like a few minutes. But still, even with the weird outdated controls, it's still a pretty tough game to recommend. But as for my other issues with this game is that, while it is kinda cool that you get to see different cutscenes with the different characters, unfortunately it seems like that you do every single level in the exact same order, and all the levels are the exact same, the only difference is that you get to fight a different boss at the end. So after beating one character's story and you do want to play another character's story, then you're going to be doing the exact same stages in the exact same order, and yeah, it would just get really repetitive. So if you do want to beat the game 100%, I'd recommend doing it slowly but surely. And another issue I had is that fighting up against these sub-bosses, which are the boss characters that you can't play as, usually they're like giant enemies, and most of the time their hitboxes are just such a pain in the ass to get into. 
and probably the hardest boss in the entire game, in my opinion, would have to be this gigantic cock. So whatever you do, do not underestimate the gigantic cock. It's just gonna suck your cock. But yeah, other than these few things though, I actually do find that the game is actually kinda decent. But I am well aware that I'm probably gonna be in the minority on this, and also that I probably like this game more than I should have liked it, but for some reason though, I actually did found it to be somewhat enjoyable. So like I already said, I wouldn't recommend it to most people for the controls are pretty outdated and I have a feeling some people would find them to be very frustrating, which I can totally understand. But even if the controls haven't aged all that well, I can at least say that it's still better than the Battle Arena Toshinden's controls. And another thing to remember too is that because this game is made by Tamsoft, they also made one of the worst games ever being Eternal Quest on PS2, so thank god it's not nearly as bad as that. I mean, I'd play Abala Burn over that game like any fucking day. And speaking of Tamsoft, considering that they are still around, and what they're doing mostly is just putting out Samurai Kagura games, it does make me wish that they could like possibly do like a sequel to this, or even like a remake or something. I don't know, I think that would actually be kind of cool. So yeah, this is a game that I probably do like more than most people would, and I totally do understand that, so yeah, I can understand people disagreeing me on this one if you have played this game before, and if you haven't tried it, well, I'd say give it a go and tell me what you think. Either way, with that said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day. <laughs>